I always clap so aggressively, oh my god. Hello, welcome back to the freaking channel. My name is Lynn D. Jung, I am a science fiction and fantasy writer, and yes, it's the same outfit as one of my previous videos. I'm just filming a bunch of things at once so I can like have things ready to go for while I'm away. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to critique someone's writing and actually be helpful without, you know, like hurting their feelings. So I have gone over the basics of beta readers, critique partners, what they are, what function they serve, and some things about how to, you know, do those things effectively in a previous video, which I will link below. But I wanted to, yeah, just go over some of the fundamentals, like what you can do as someone who is critiquing someone else's very, very precious work that they've entrusted to you. So I think one of the big caveats here is that everyone sort of has something different that they're looking for when it comes to receiving feedback. Um, depending on the stage of writing they're at, how long they've been working on the book, and what they're looking to improve, what they know that they've been struggling with, and might be some weak points, um, and what perspectives they feel like they lack when it comes to their own writing. You know, we've all been through this, we've all like spent a lot of time and energy working on a book, or you know, on a story or whatever, and then someone comes at us with critique that we hadn't even thought of. That's always like such a delightful experience. I think that's the whole point, you know, of <laughs> getting someone to look over your work, someone with fresh eyes, someone with a different perspective, someone who can sort of point you in the right direction when maybe you've been looking down the same like tunnel for a really long time. I think the only thing here is that you know, our different perspectives, our different approaches to writing as a craft and critique can sort of create these like systems of, or like biased readings basically. I've definitely had this experience where I've been reading someone's work and I realized that I couldn't really help them. I couldn't provide helpful, actionable feedback. Sometimes it's because the writing was just, you know, in my opinion, like really well done, um, really polished and the craft was really there. Sometimes it's because I just don't really understand the author's vision necessarily and everything that I was going to say might have steered the story into a totally different direction. So I think one of the main things to keep in mind is definitely to understand the author's perspective when you're reading their work, what they actually envision the book to be. You want to help them achieve that vision and not your own. That's something I'll go into a little bit later, but that's just sort of the starting point of this video. Basically, at the end of the day, you want your critique to be as helpful and actionable as possible. You want it to be relevant to the story and you want to do it in kind of a nice way so you're not hurting anyone's feelings. A lot of people have tough skin. A lot of people are a little bit more sensitive, you know, we all just sort of have different places that we come from and levels of comfort. So yeah, just be kind with your feedback, but be honest and be helpful. So I've sort of split this up into three categories and it'll be before reading the book, while reading the book, and after reading the book. Um, so right here is going to be before you start reading. I think one of the big things you can do as a critique partner when you're sort of coming to this agreement with someone else is um, be upfront about what your strengths and weaknesses are. I'm very much a character, plot, structure type of person. I'm really good at seeing the big picture. You know, things like voice and line level things and hmm, world building, I'm a little shakier on. I struggle to see like the logic of fantasy worlds because I kind of just don't care and this really shows in my own writing which is why I, I try to have a lot of critique partners who can you know actually look for logic. Another thing to really really get clarification on is what the writer wants from this critique. So some people are just looking for um, like positivity passages which is when you don't really have negative feedback, not even negative, but constructive feedback. You're just going like, this is really strong, this is really good, you're on the right track. And that is just something that will boost them forward, maybe propel them and motivate them to keep writing. I've definitely had moments where I've needed that and I've sought that out and it can be super helpful, but obviously that's not the time to be like, hey, you need to restructure this character arc. It's, you know, you keep it to yourself because honestly, more often than not, the author probably already knows that that's an issue and is going to work on it, but just isn't looking for that sort of feedback right now. But yeah, just asking whether they like their critiques done sandwich style, which is when you do like a positive um, feedback point, a negative feedback point, and then a positive one again, or just like really harsh, straightforward to the point. Just asking what style they're looking for. And this is another point where you can ask, do they prefer that their 
feedback be given to them as inline sort of like annotated comments on like a document or do they want an edit letter um, what format do they want it in and then turnaround time that's a big one as well all these sort of like minute details that you need to really figure out before you just jump right into it because this is work and you do want to be helpful to them so you want to really understand what they are looking for and what will work best for them another little note here is that you do want to understand as well what this person is striving for in terms of their manuscript or story. If they're headed for like traditional publishing, if they're about to go on submission, obviously you want to be like a little bit tougher on them. If they're trying to like send this out to agents, then yeah, you want to be tougher on them. But if they're just sort of writing as an exercise and they're just sharing for fun, then you can go a little easier on them. Maybe just like point them in the direction of resources that they could use to learn more about writing and that sort of thing. And it's also always good to know what draft they're on. I approach draft ones or first drafts very, very differently from fifth drafts or books that someone has been working on or rewriting for like five Five years versus a couple months yeah just sort of having like expectations or mitigating your expectations so you can you know approach this manuscript with the right mindset this is where we circle back to that thing i mentioned of understanding the writer's vision for their story so you can help them achieve that vision the best you can when i am you know agreeing to take on someone's manuscript as like a, a feedback like to critique it basically I almost always ask for a short pitch or a synopsis or something along those lines, something short that really, that they've polished, hopefully, that really showcases what the author's vision is, what they're working for. I think one of the big things that I run into a lot is that there will be a discrepancy between the pitch, like the book that I imagine based off of the pitch and the synopsis versus the book I'm actually reading. And that is where you want to focus your feedback. So yeah, just really understanding the writer's goals for their story. Obviously there will be things that you'll run into once in a while, something like, you know, the synopsis will promise a really fast paced story and then it tends to like slog a little bit. That's, you know, obviously something you want to work on versus if the pacing is slow for you personally as a reader, but that is what the pitch and the synopsis imply, then you kind of really don't have anything to say. Another thing is if a character is promised to be a certain trope, like morally gray or like a villain turned hero, then you want that character to live up to that that promise of the premise in the actual manuscript and you want to guide them in that direction. But if a heroine is marketed as like morally gray and kind of unlikable and you just find them kind of unlikable, then that's not something that you should be like, I don't know, telling them to rework. Just to hammer it in one last time. Ultimately, your goal as a critique partner is to bring the manuscript as close to the writer's vision as you possibly can. Yes, this again, you're trying to lay your own biases aside, your personal preferences aside. Hopefully you're taking on projects that align with your personal preferences, but you know, every book is a snowflake, so everything is going to be a little bit different. Not everything's going to work for you, but yeah, you should respect the writer's vision unless something really isn't working in their vision in which case you can maybe sort of like say something but for the most part and then the final thing to sort of clarify before you start reading someone's book is to just be honest about your limits um a lot of the time i will be like hey this is gonna take me a while i tend to get very busy and slogged down and overwhelmed so it takes me a long time to read especially when i'm critiquing and most of the time that's fine but Sometimes, you know, someone wants something a little bit faster and they're totally free to go out and like seek that out. But yeah, I'm not gonna promise like a three week turnaround when I can't do that. <laughs> At the end of the day, you are also a person, this is also labor and it's usually for no money. So you want to be aware of your limits and boundaries and just be very upfront about those so no one gets hurt or disappointed. So the next section of this is during reading. And this will be things that you can do while you're reading to just sort of beef up your critique skills, critique given skills. I don't really know what the verb would be. This all sort of is dependent, of course, on what the author has asked of you, what you guys have agreed on beforehand. For me, one of the things I ultimately end up doing most of the time during critiques is keeping an eye out for continuity issues and big picture sort of issues. This is just sort of like bare bones, um, you know, critique stuff. Yeah, so be really, really firm on your fundamentals. So pacing and world building, character arcs, themes, just plot structure and that sort of thing. Those are all things that you want to keep a firm eye on, take notes on, and be ready to like give that feedback when you can. If you start to drift or skim or lose focus at all, mark that section with a, like a highlight or a comment or something because there's probably some sort of pacing issue there. If you lose track of what's going on, if you forget a character's name, just things like that, like things where you sort of lose engagement. 
you also want to mark that even if you don't necessarily know what the fix is you just want to make note of those um, sections and yeah sort of hand in hand with that it's really important or at least for me to take notes as i read because often especially if the book is really good i'll find myself getting carried away and like not remembering any of my talking points or comments at a certain point of the book so yeah just jotting down notes as you go even if it's just like wow i really like this or just all of your thoughts stream of consciousness get a little notepad or something and just make a record of that and then you can sift through that later that's always super helpful it like untangling your thoughts is always like the hardest part of critique but just getting the thoughts on the paper is a really good first step every book is a different experience every book is a different reading experience but just trying to maintain your objectivity if something like upsets you like i've definitely had this where i've you know done sensitivity reads and i was like this is kind of like not a cool thing to put in your book i will like step away and take a breather because i know that that's why i was brought onto this i'm not personally offended it's just like kind of like mm, if that makes any sense at all so i have to get back to that place where i can become objective again so i can be helpful to that person that i'm reading for and give them feedback that will fix this issue and of course like nine out of ten times the author is perfectly receptive to that and it's not a big deal at all they just like didn't have the knowledge and i'm giving them the knowledge not taking anything personally or not working yourself up over things in the book so that's the during reading part and after reading there's a couple things you can do while you're sort of like gathering your thoughts and preparing your critique for the writer to use i think the first thing that i like to focus on is just talking about things that I really like genuinely liked about the book. Um, this can be big picture or just like lines or characters or whatever, you know, whatever you genuinely enjoyed. Because personally, I can smell an insincere compliment from a mile away and I kind of really don't appreciate them. They're like a waste of time to me. Don't give a compliment just to give a compliment. Give a compliment because it like is coming from like a, a real place, you know, like you actually like that. You thought it was well done. Hopefully you'll be able to find this in the manuscript. If not, Oh god, I am sorry. Yeah, just starting off on a good foot always like really helps. Also, being really considerate with your wording when you're giving more constructive style feedback is super helpful. I really personally, I don't know if some people do like this, but I do not enjoy it when people are snarky with their feedback. I think it's really rude, honestly. One piece of feedback that I got like years ago, like on like, I don't know, Tumblr or something was, uh, god, what was it? It was like, everything is fine until the inciting incident and then dot 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 oh dear dot 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 it becomes a bit of a mess like that's the only well i mean like i've gotten hurt by feedback before but that's the only time i've gotten kind of like mad at someone not that i was angry toward them but it was like it kind of you know like heated me up because one that's not very helpful two it's just worded in a way that's unnecessarily rude in my opinion and I like wish they hadn't done that. I could have, you know, said something beforehand about like, mm, but it's unprofessional, it's it's rude, it's like not very nice. So just don't be, it's not the place to be a smart ass. And then of course, when you are giving your feedback, try to be as specific as possible. Like don't say something like, oh, the pacing was a mess. Don't say mess, just don't say mess. Say things like, oh, on a line level, the pacing in the hallway scene on page blah 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 was a little bit slow and you could have used less descriptors even if you don't get that specific just pointing out what scenes were slow what scenes kind of like stopped you um you know you don't have to be like an english professor or a creative writing professor in this moment but you definitely just um citing pages citing places where you felt like things were a little off just just describing exactly what you mean instead of just saying across the line or across the board like the pacing was slow. Another thing here is you can pitch suggestions if the writer's open to it but be really careful about it and sort of like keep it small if you can. I try to stay away from pitching like big picture suggestions. You know going back to the pacing example you could be like oh you know removing some of these like filler words or shortening the sentences so they aren't compound complex because that sort of like drags the pacing down. Um, might be helpful in just tightening that scene. But if it's something like, oh, you know, this character is an assassin and that's not realistic. It would be more realistic if they were a knight. Like, that is sort of bleeding into personal preference and you don't want to, you know, fall down that rabbit hole. So just be kind of careful about what you pitch. Another thing that is important to remember is don't get bogged down by the details. Um, you can get as specific as you want, but if you're 
finding yourself just like changing typos or wording or doing like line or copy edits that don't necessarily help story issues like pacing etc then you're probably not being super helpful honestly grammar spelling typos are the least important part of a book and that gets fixed way later down the line odds are if you're critiquing for someone they are going to do a lot of like rewriting anyway so you could be changing a typo that will not exist in a couple iterations of the book so don't waste your time with that just focus on larger picture things focus on what the person is asking you to help with and then the last thing here is to just be open to communication if someone has a point of clarification or a question about any of your notes be available to explain be available to like discuss you don't have to be super available if it's like five email chains back and forth then maybe not but you just want to be able to like back yourself up because Otherwise, it kind of comes off as just saying things that are constructive to be petty or mean. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, you're there to help. And hopefully you've been able to explain yourself well enough in your edit letter or comments or wherever else. But if not, then just, you know, be ready to answer some questions. Honestly, being a critique partner is about more than just like reading someone's book once and making some comments and like moving on with your life. Like it's about discussing that story, having and fostering a genuine um, passion or investment in someone else's work to the point where you can maybe brainstorm solutions or read different iterations like yeah it's about like friendship and community more than like proving that you know the most about craft that's all it is yeah <laughs> all right that is pretty much it those are all the little notes and tips and tricks i have on being a good critique partner um thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time